everyone, how is it going? We are live here on YouTube with a International Clown Week special episode. We're doing a tramp or hobo clown makeup demonstration. Now, the hobo or tramp clown is considered the only true American clown. It is inspired by real people, the homeless from the late 1800s. Some believe that this character developed from the depression in the 1930s when men rode the rails looking for work. So the classic tramp or hobo clown, the look is a sooty face from the coal of uh, the train or the campfire if they were uh, sleeping outside at night. And um, part of the concept of the makeup is there are white areas in the makeup and that is as if they wiped their eyes clean, their mouth clean of the soot so they can see and eat. So the, the lower face is usually uh, a sooty color, sort of a five o'clock shadow. And the upper part of the face is sort of a sunburny effect of uh, just being exposed to the outside. So this is sort of the design concept that we're going for for the hobo character. So it's got a just a white section for the mouth, got some white eyes. The beard area is a darker gray color and the upper face is sort of a flush tone, maybe just a little bit on the red, um, and some overall dirtiness all over. And uh, the eyebrows are more or less to be just above my natural eyebrows. So this is not quite as bright and colorful as a, um, a birthday party or circus clown, although the, the hobo character does have its history in the circus. So let's get started with the makeup. We can talk more about the history. We're going to use uh, mainly Mayron products. I have my Mayron Clown White. I have Mayron Foundation Grease Paint in black and red. I have some Mayron Celeb Pro uh, foundation. I have some Mayron, or this is uh, Kryolan um, Dry Rouge. Uh, in red, I have some Mayron eye powder in black. We'll set the makeup using some baby powder. And if I was to complete the process and remove the makeup in the end, I like using uh, baby oil. Uh, actually, I like using the baby oil gel. This doesn't run quite as much as the baby oil, so it doesn't get all over the place. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. So this look is going to be based on a um, sort of a, a flush tone with the the red and gray yet afterwards. So I'll start with the uh, the the flush tone foundation. And while I'm doing makeup, I use the back end of a brush to scoop out the makeup. That way, I'm not putting my finger in the makeup. I just put some on the end of the brush. And then I could just put it on the back of my hand and this will be the, the palette I can work from. Uh, so to start with, I usually shave, wash my face, get it uh, pretty clean. And then uh, I begin with the makeup, the foundation. I don't need a lot just to even out the tones. And I'll be adding other colors So the, the hobo uh, is, or tramp character is probably not going to be the birthday party clown. Uh, the people probably don't want to celebrate their birthday party, but they can be in a circus. They can do a religious routine. Uh, they could possibly be a magician. 
Uh, I know a lot of clowns will use their hobo character in a parade. My first time doing a hobo clown was at my first uh, clown uh, training experience at Moose Camp, uh, Mooseburger Clown Arts Camp. Uh, they, the, year, the two years I went, they had a hobo dinner is one of their night's activities where everyone dressed up in their hobo makeup and costumes and enjoyed a nice, I don't know, beef stew or some other hobo style dinner. It just gives you an opportunity to play around with a different type of character and makeup. Now the different clown organizations have definitions of a tramp character and a definition for a hobo character. And those might give you some ideas of what the characters should look like. And especially if you're going to be competing in one of their competitions, you should understand what they are looking for when it comes to creating a hobo or tramp. But ultimately, the great thing about being a clown is you're creating your own character. So you can, you can do it however you want to do it. So now uh, we have our base foundation on so I can move on to the white. Again, just uh, scoop some makeup out on the back of the brush, put it on my hand. Probably took a lot more than I need. So like I said, the, the white is, the hobo has like cleaned his eyes off, cleaned his mouth off, and it's the areas that aren't sooty. And so it's like, I usually think it's like, which, if I'm cleaning my eye off, I'm going to swipe downward so the eyes will usually have like a downward effect to it. And I don't want it to be like pure white. You can do your character however you want, but I want it to sort of be a more subdued makeup look. Now I want the uh, the white to blend into the flesh colors a bit. I was reading up on the tramp and hobo uh, clown characters and sort of the history of it and whether the original clowns who were portraying the characters really were thinking how is this character defined who is it trying to be um, I think the the modern clown organizations have given it a little bit more meaning than the original clowns had intended but they usually look at the, the the tramp as a sad character and wants people to feel sorry for him. He's going to avoid doing work and expects a handout. The hobo, on the other hand, is more happy and carefree. They just love to travel and they would prefer to work instead of getting a handout, but they just don't have, they, they like to live on the road and go place to place. So makeup wise they'll both have the same basic characteristics but the hobo might have a slightly happier appearance and look uh, um, than the tramp. But ultimately like I said this is your character to design and create the way you want it to look.
Let's just blend the flesh tone in white together. off my fingers. Now I could go on to the uh, black color for the, uh, the soot and the beard. Now, if you look at uh, the actual beard pattern of a face, uh, it starts up and goes down a bit. Um, so I, I usually try to give it a little bit of the curvature and a little uh, definition. And I try not to go too dark with the colors. Slowly add the makeup on, building. Colors and blending it in. Now since I added the foundation to begin with, there's already some makeup to uh, work with, so I don't need as much. And it's, it's good to um, think about all of your exposed surfaces, so uh, your ears, your neck should also have some makeup on it so that, so that you don't have the, the disconnect of this part of your face looks in character, but the rest of you doesn't, and like, you don't want to have like a fancy Rolex watch on, or different things that just sort of break the look of the character. And the nice thing about the uh, the hobo characters is it doesn't have to be a totally neat job. It, could, it can be splotchy. And some people actually use like a stipple sponge to create the uneven effect. Now the next color I want to add is the red, and the red's going to be sort of the sunburn look. And I can go with a 
a clown nose and you can add makeup to it. They sell some uh, clown noses that sort of have a red tip and more of a flesh color on the side or you could create it yourself. So I could go with a uh, glued on clown nose to complete the look or I can paint my nose uh, whichever uh, works best for the type of character you're trying to create. So again, just take a little red, add it to my hand so I have lots of colors on my hand to work with. And when you get sunburn, it's like your cheeks get sunburn, your nose gets sunburn, you might get on your forehead. So just start to figure out where the sunburn would occur and start adding the red color to the mix. And if you go too bright and red, you just add some flesh tone in and lighten it up again. Now, I like to use my fingers when I'm using my doing my own face. If I was helping someone else with the makeup, I would probably use more of a brush, but I find the fingers uh, cover a good area and do a jo good job of blending and although I'm technically uh, trying to create the uh, tramp or hobo look I think that you could create a pirate character that has some of the same characteristics that the pirates probably uh, hasn't shaved for a few days. They're going to have a little bit of the sunburn maybe. top of the ears don't forget like other parts of your face um, and it's okay to be a, a little uneven some those patches where like they maybe rubbed a rag on their head to Got some extra dirt. And you just keep on working on it till you think it looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, I'm going to add the eyebrows. And I'm going to add them in just above my real eyebrows and just give them a little bit of a flare. And for that, I use a brush. It's a, just a little bit more precise for something like an eyebrow. So I like to go just a little bit up in the center and then just sort of follow the edge of the eyebrow. I give it a little bit of a uh, eyeliner.
if for the the clown characters, usually a clown will paint their lower lip and go up. For the hobo, I do the opposite. I just do a very thin uh, black line on the upper lip and then go down. And that just sort of gives it that sad appearance. So just go into the crease of the mouth to go the, the down effect. And then just a thin line on the upper lip. And that, that could be it. Uh, um, you don't really have to do a whole lot more to it. And so, just sort of, every time I blink my eyes, the eyes crease, so the makeup creases a bit in the eyes. So usually before I powder the makeup, I will uh, just sort of check the eye area to see, do I like it? Then I use baby powder. I just put it in a rubber bank container. And I have a real fluffy brush that will just sort of uh, put, oops, clean my hand off first, get the extra makeup off so I don't get it everywhere. And then sort of uh, close my eyes and tip my head and sort of uh, don't breathe in while you're doing it. Then I use another powder puff that's uh, and just sort of press it in and just make sure that I've gotten all the makeup. Compared to like the white face clown, the um, the hobo character doesn't have a whole lot of makeup on their face, so it's a little bit easier to powder it and you don't really have to worry about... Like if you have a big glob of makeup, uh, you put too much black somewhere that when you powder it, you press in and it'll pick up that makeup and then it'll start spreading it somewhere. So you just got need to be careful that you don't have a glob of makeup somewhere too much. And then afterwards, you brush it off. This is a... This is a brush for baby's hair, uh, just to keep help a nice soft brush. I think it's goat hair, and it's nice and soft for removing the excess powder. But one of the nice things with the hobo character, sometimes um, when, I'm, when I'm wearing a costume or whatever, I'll put a, a sprinkle of a little baby powder on it because it's just a little bit more soot, a little bit more dust. At this point, the, the makeup is set, it's dry to the touch, it, 
you don't have to wait any of my time. So I painted this nose on, but like I said, I could apply, I can glue on another nose that's to just give it a maybe a more clowny appearance of a big bulky nose. Uh, I always wear just a, whatever sh uh, cheap t-shirt I have available when I'm doing the makeup, just so I don't get makeup on it. I would change into whatever costume. Uh, for the hobo character, I'll uh, sometimes wear like a bandana just to cover my hair and the head. Uh, really depends on what color matches your outfit. Um, I don't know that I would use a hot pink one, but try that. Um, I have a, I, this was made by TNT that I got at a convention, a hobo hat. It's all patched up, so I could wear something like this. One of the um, first times I did it, I found this hat in uh, for uh, dolls or teddy bears or whatever, and I just put a string on it, and I thought wearing a tiny top hat sort of off to the side might be an interesting effect. Uh, as far as the costume is concerned, it could be an old suit that's got some holes in it, some patches sewn on it, uh, an old shirt, uh, oversized ties, um, maybe some clothes from, that looks like it's from the 50s or 60s, that just sort of something that you found in a yard sale, uh, garage sale or some situation since the hobo or tramp character doesn't have a lot of money. They're not going to have your Ralph Lauren fancy suits. You're going to have something that is recycled, uh, a jeans jacket or just something rugged and outdoorsy. So that is sort of what I would do for the makeup for the tramp hobo character. So I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, oh. I could add, if I want to darken the beard, I could use some of the eyeshadow and just sort of work it in. If I want to, uh, if I don't feel like the color is bright enough, I could use the red to add a little bit more red somewhere. Like I said, at the end of the day, when you're ready to take it off, baby or baby oil, uh, this is the baby oil gel, works fine. This is oil-based makeup, so you're just adding oil back to the makeup to reactivate it, and then you can wash it off with soap and water without having to really scrub your skin hard. So yeah, we're just continuing our clown week with a Tramp Hobo makeup design, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos this week showing other types of clown characters.